Alright, so we're currently on the hunt for the world's biggest crocodile in the top end of Australia. Now, I've teamed up with my mate Brody from Top End Crocodile Services, who has worked with these creatures for most of his life. There's another one behind it. There's two, this big one on the bank, there's two crocs there. Look, there's a big male behind it. And he's no stranger to big crocs. We've caught up a couple times over the past few years and had some insane encounters with big saltwater crocodiles out in the wild. And being a bloke who sees more than a thousand crocs in the wild, each year I reckon we got a pretty good chance at seeing some big ones over the next couple days but before we track down the world's biggest crocodile we're heading out west to some wild country which is the perfect habitat for their smaller relatives the freshies Right, so before we actually go out looking for these freshwater crocodiles that live out in this area, we've just come to this huge cave system. We're about 200 kilometers inland in the top end of Australia. And the sea level used to be up above here. So there was big sea creatures swimming around in this area hundreds of millions of years ago. Pretty crazy. It was about 300 million years ago. This was underneath the ocean. There was a big inland sea and this was an ancient coral reef and you can see old remnants of coral and little critters that would have been swimming around here. And, and there would have been huge sea creatures. Marine reptiles like plesiosaurs, cronosaurs swimming around. So that's 300 million years ago? Yeah, from I think what I've read up about this, this place, that's what they reckon. The fossils they've got of ancient crocs, they evolved somewhere around 200, 250 million years ago. And that, they weren't quite crocodiles back then either. They were um, crocodile-like reptiles. So, so they were all different types, ones that had flippers, ones that um, could chase you down on land and climb trees mm. and stuff like that. All right, so we're currently in far north Queensland and we've just driven from the coast uh, a couple hundred kilometers out west and believe it or not all the way out here there are crocodiles but not big salties in this area no so we're too far inland a couple hundred k's and uh there's there's rock barriers physical barriers that prevent saltwater crocodiles getting up this far but in this area in particular what we're going to be looking for after dark and even in this area during the day is the freshies you know we've filmed areas that there's been 20 or 30 freshwater crocodiles sitting on one sandbank. This is not exactly like that. Nah, the terrain's kind of laid out a little bit different here. So what you're looking at is a lot of shallow sections like this, and then you've got your deeper pools, and the crocs will seem to congregate around those deeper pools, um, but, but very low densities of freshies here. And what size are these freshwater crocodiles, and could they get in a creek like this? For females, they'll average out about one and a half, two meters long. Your males will get a little bit bigger, about two, Two and a half meters on average. Uh, really big ones will get to three meters long. All right, let's keep walking, check out this terrain, and see if we can find any crocs. Sounds good. So this is a freshwater crocodile track right here. Yeah. You can see it. And what's this croc doing right now? Uh, there's three slides here. So he's gone for a bit of a walkabout by the looks of it. He must have come from this pool. He's gone over there, there's a little bit of water on that side. And then for whatever reason he's come back and then come back again. So he's a bit, a bit lost. All right, we've been walking for the past couple of hours just up this creek right here. And it's so cool, such amazing terrain. Up here in the top end, it's super hot so we're gonna jump in and go for a swim. Now we can see in this pool, there's no saltwater crocodiles that live in this creek. Now, the freshwater ones, they can still take a big chunk out of you. You don't wanna be messing around with that species, but they're not the deadly species. They've never killed anyone here in Australia. So a bit of peace of mind when I'm in this shallow pool right here. I'll chuck the snorkeling gear on and see if we can find any cool creatures just living in this shallow little area.
just snorkeled under this rock. There's some really big crayfish sitting under there as well. And then out of nowhere, I shine the torch around and there's a little freshwater crocodile just sitting up under there, tucked up under the rock. This is his pool. We're gonna get out, keep walking up the creek, go for a night walk. But yeah, it's nice to cool off swimming with a little crocodile up here in the top end. And how big of a croc is that? This one's probably the biggest slide we've seen, maybe two meters, two maybe meters, a little bit bigger. Yeah. But yeah, this is proper fresh. This is probably within the last couple of hours, actually. All right, so it's just gotten dark. This is the same stretch of river, but now we're walking back up it, looking for these freshwater crocodiles. Now, the good thing about this is we can look way up the river and actually eye shine them. So we'll be able to see what pools these crocs are sitting in, keep that torch on them, sneak up with them and hopefully see them in this crystal clear water. By the slides we were seeing today, there's a couple not bad sized ones just up in further pools up that way. So we'll go for a bit of a walk and see if we can find anything. So you can see what this little freshwater crocodile is doing is he's positioned himself right at the center of these little rapids and what he's doing is he had his mouth open he's just sitting there waiting for little fish waiting for little shrimp to cruise down but yes yeah, so cool seeing these crocodiles in the crystal clear water and when we walked past this area earlier today we didn't know that there was a crocodile sitting within these pools he would have just been tucked up under a bank sitting up under a rocks in a deeper section and then after dark, since they're mainly a nocturnal species, we'll come out here and go hunting throughout the night. But yeah, take a look at him. So cool. Little freshwater crocodile here in the top end of Australia. All right, so this is the second freshwater crocodile of the night. And just like the first one, he was sitting in those rapids up there. We're seeing these crocodiles from about 30 meters away. Their eyes are shining back at us, bright red, so you can spot them in the shallow water. But what this guy's done is he's just moved down, bunkered himself down on the bottom of this river, and he's just gonna wait there, wait for us to pass on, go back to that rapid and keep on feeding. We've got a bit more of a walk up this creek before we call it a night, but yeah, how cool is that? Freshwater crocodiles, 200 kilometers inland in the top end of Australia. You can't get much better than that, right? Let you be, mate. So we ended up filming eight freshwater crocodiles, but there was plenty of signs to tell us that not only was there more, but there was bigger individuals living in this creek. It's 8 a.m. on day two, and the plan for today is we're gonna take the boat out and try find some big saltwater crocs. There's been five meter crocodiles caught in this section of river before, and with the sun being out and it being a pretty cold morning, we should be able to see some of these big individuals out on the banks and we're off to a good start. We only just launched the boat, and I'm pretty sure I see a crocodile sitting up there. We'll go check it out straight away, just that little white mark on the bank. You reckon that's a croc? I think 100% that's a crocodile. I can see two legs and a tail on it now. Yeah. Straight away. So we're just coming up to a corner where I know that there's a uh, decent male that likes to sit. Sometimes you get a female sitting with him too. We'll see if we get lucky today and see both of them. But this time of year we're coming into breeding season for the crocodiles. The days are just starting to warm up a little bit and get a little bit longer. And that, that's sort of a visual cue for crocodiles to start mating and courting. And uh, that'll last for a couple of months. 
And then once the wet season starts, that'll be nesting season for saltwater crocodiles. There's a big male behind it. He's popping up, he's popping up. That's that scoop cut one. Really? Yeah. Almost bet money that that's a mature female on the left, and then that's a male, or definitely a male on the right. But she's in good condition. So, she could have been there and just heard us and gone there. Actually be able to get a really good gauge at the size of this croc. Brody actually works with these crocodiles and there's some nice footprints right on the edge. So what he's doing is it's pretty cold up here in the top end at the moment, middle of winter. So these crocodiles are coming out in the banks to warm up. He might have even heard us cruising up the river. You can even see scales down here from his jowls, the tip of his tail. Um, and his feet, like look at the imprint on his foot, look at the detail in that. Yeah, look at the size. That is a huge footprint. So that's his, that's one of his back feet. And then up here, you can kind of get a gauge of his, his girth, the size of his belly. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd put him probably up there with four, four meters, maybe 4.2. And he might've heard us coming and shot back into the river. So no doubt he'd be sitting on the floor out there somewhere. Somewhere out in the deeper water. Yeah. We've been here before a few times, we've spotted him by helicopter once, but um, he's always a bit shy when it comes to cruising up the river on the boat. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately for him, he's left, uh, he's left his evidence here, <laughs> yeah. hiding that. Right there, little croc behind you, right there. Phased one bit, that crocodile. Yeah. So a lot of the crocs we're seeing uh, in this river, the densities aren't actually that high, uh, opposed to other places in the top end of Australia. Here on the east coast, you're probably only looking at about one or two mature crocodiles per one kilometre on average. And then you get a few smaller ones like that in between. Uh, in Queensland, most of the crocodile population is found in Cape York and the Gulf Country, about 80% of them and then only about 20% from Port Douglas all the way south to Rockhampton. There's about 1,000 kilometres of coastline there. You're only looking at about 20%. The government guys that manage crocs in Queensland, they estimate the population to be anywhere around 20 to 30,000 mature crocodiles. And how big's a mature crocodile? So basically anything that's over two metres in length, they, they count as mature. Yeah. But what would you consider a big crocodile here in North Queensland? A big crocodile? Uh, a big one for me has got to be up there with four metres or so. Yeah, three and a half, nah, seen enough of those. Four metres, five metres, that's a big croc. A lot of people will tell you, and this is something that I noticed on some of the uh, previous videos, is, you know, everyone's got their claims of massive crocodiles, six metre crocs, seven metre crocs, nine metre ones, whatever. Uh, and I don't blame these people for seeing these massive crocs, but I don't think that they're that big. You know, a lot of the time they haven't put tape measures on them, they haven't worked with crocodiles themselves. And, and a five metre croc from the right angle looks absolutely massive. Now, Miller here thought that a three metre one was six metres long <laughs> once upon a time. <laughs> nah, I'm cutting that part out. <laughs> you can see right here, just a little salty, sitting on the bank of this river that we've been cruising up. We've seen about 13 or 14 crocs so far. That's a nice looking one as well, healthy looking croc. He's just up here, getting the last sun of the day. Oh yeah, we'll keep cruising, see what else we can find. See you, mate. Big crocodile slide. 
maybe two and a half, three meter croc, we should be able to find some bigger slides just down the river. There's some good sandbanks down here. All right, so we just pulled up on this little sandbank right here. The tide's pushing well out at the moment. And we've got another big croc slide just over here. So that's not a bad croc. That's a big male that's come all the way up, sat up here, and then gone back in. And you can see, if you come in here, the thickness of the belly and those giant handprints. So he'd be out there somewhere, could even be watching us right now. Not bad size, three and a half, four meter crocodile. Yeah. So definitely a male at this size. Now, one of the most commonly asked questions I get asked is what's the difference between a saltwater crocodile and a freshwater crocodile? The names are very misleading to start with. Both of them will live in salt and freshwater environments. Salties are probably called that because the first early pioneers that saw one were sitting in salt water. And then decades later when they discovered freshwater crocodiles. Now freshies, they're a smaller, shy species. They've got the narrowest snouts. Salties are a lot broader in shape. And uh, the size is another indicator as well. So, you know, a crocodile slide this big, obviously a saltwater crocodile. Freshies will max out at three metres long. Uh, whereas the salties, females, two and a half, three metres. Males will get up to four to five metres on average. And saltwater crocodiles are the biggest species of crocs in the world. That's right. So there's several uh, crocodilian species that get quite large. You know, your American crocs, your Nile crocodiles, saltwater crocodiles, even some of your gharial species as well. But um, from the records we have, salties hold the title. So the biggest one ever caught was six metres and 17 centimetres. And that was Lo Long over in the Philippines. So where else do salties live around the world? So they're the most widespread species of crocodilian on the planet. They don't just live in the top end of Australia. You'll find them up in the Torres Strait Islands, Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, even in the parts of India. Uh, another name for them is the Indo-Pacific crocodile, which is a great one for them. And Nile crocodiles come in at a close second. Yeah, so Nile crocs, they're sort of second in line at the moment, but you still get, you know, five, five and a half metre Nile crocodiles. And they're, they're quite solid. They're built a bit more solid than salties, I've found. Did Nile crocs kill more people? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we know that one or not. I think yeah. record-keeping-wise, Niles probably do, but salties, they're probably not far behind. A lot of um, accidents or crocodile attacks do go unreported. So salties, you know, they'd probably kill, you know, 100, 200 people globally around the year. In Australia, attacks are quite rare. Um, you're only looking at about three or four attacks a year on average, and out of those attacks, maybe one or two of them might be a fatality. So Lo Long, the 6 metre, 17 centimetre croc caught over in the Philippines, is to this day the biggest croc that's ever been on record. But do you reckon that there's a chance in Australia that there's a crocodile bigger than that living out here? There, there are claims out there of bigger crocodiles, um, but I always take with a bit of grain of salt. You know, I'd, I'd see close to a thousand crocodiles a year in the wild. It, it's rare to see proper five metre ones. Yeah. You know, there's, there's been a handful of times where I've looked at a croc and gone, you know, wow, that's, that's a big animal, but I haven't gone, you know, wow, that's, that thing's six, seven metres long despite what many fishermen, I mean, this morning we had a couple of guys that told us about big crocodiles up here and, and um, I, I think it gets exaggerated a little bit. Yeah. But the chance of finding a big one, oh, you never know your luck. Do you think in a remote place, maybe in the NT where there's more crocodiles, there's more food for them, there's a better chance of them growing to that big size? There's a lot of factors that determine how a crocodile will grow. So food availability, stress, genetics, temperature, it all contributes to it. So for Lo Long, for example, they believe that he might have had exceptional circumstances to get to that size. Mm. You know, heaps of food, he's got good genetics, uh, minimum to no stress on the animal, the temperature. Um, it's closer to the uh, equator up there as well, so it stays hotter throughout the year longer. And, and some of the, the, the sort of early pioneer crocodile guys, I've listened to them talk about this and, and they believe if there might be other six metre or bigger ones, it's probably over up in Southeast Asia somewhere. Yeah, right. Maybe even in the Philippines where Lo Long was caught. Yeah, it's possible. He could have a sibling, maybe. And there's no stopping one of the Nile crocs in a remote place in Africa from getting up to that size as well. Possible, yeah, possible, but yeah. you've got to put a tape measure on and prove it to me before yeah. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're just keeping our eye out on this huge swamp right here. Now, here in Cape York and even in the top end of Australia, 
they had one of the biggest wet seasons in decades. There was a cyclone that came through and the water levels went up so much that crocodiles are now being found in places that they shouldn't normally be. You know, even in swimming holes that people go in often. Because what stops a saltwater crocodile from getting up to those places is natural barriers like waterfalls, certain rock formations. But when the water levels rise 10 meters or so, all of those rock formations and waterfalls are covered, meaning those saltwater crocodiles can get up into those places. And it also means in places like this, the big male crocs who are normally very territorial have a bit more room to move around but at the end of dry season and towards the start of the wet season when those ponds dry up that's when you can see these big saltwater crocodiles absolutely smashing each other biting legs off biting tails off smacking each other with those big heads but we just got the drone up in the air and filmed one of the coolest things that I've ever seen something that I've been wanting to film for a while big saltwater crocodiles in crystal clear water in this swamp right here So at first we found what looks like about a three, three and a half meter male crocodile about 200 meters downstream. And you can see him from above, it's not hard to spot these animals. And I was focusing on the sides of the bank because the sun's up in the air at the moment, not a cloud in the sky. I thought that'd be the perfect area for these big crocs to be sitting at this time of day. And I wasn't wrong, about 200 meters upstream, we found a big fella. It's hard to tell how big he actually was on the drone, but I reckon this could be a four meter crocodile. And that smaller one would be sticking downstream away from him, but no doubt later on in the season, if they both stick in this pool and the water level goes down, there will be conflict between those two crocs. 